Welcome back again. Uh, this is another chat about mental health and creativity. And yeah, chatting to someone very creative today um, who has, who's a writing partner and also an actress, amongst other things, um, with Alma Postma. And yeah, this is Lee. Welcome, Lee. Say hi. <laughs> Hello, Werner, and thank you so much for having me on your channel today. I really do appreciate it. Mm, yeah, welcome. Um, yeah, as you know, what the themes are, um, working with Alma, it, it sure is like, I'd say, enlightening to what the industry is like. I mean, I've only seen Alma on screen as when I was a little girl. That's the first time I saw her. And the second time around was actually when I was at university. Um, I was in my second year, I think, and she was one of the external judges for third year acting exam. And I saw her then, obviously I was starstruck, and, but always, I was always inspired by her and curious who she is as a person. And I had the privilege and honor to meet her um, in 2017, officially, when we both started working on Sidingo, where she played my mother. and. My world hasn't been the same ever since because she truly is an amazing person, an amazing co-worker, a partner in, in, in terms of our careers. So, no, I'm, I'm just happy that I'm able to work with, that, with her because she's very inspirational. Um, yeah, since I've been working with her, I've mainly been working her with her um, as when she was a presenter on, um, I think, Moilo me behind the camera mostly um so okay yeah and it's, cool. it's it's interesting to for me to um to meet her network like the just the the other other side of or other diversity of people that work with yeah. her um and i know the the the, the serialized tv things are the most challenging at times especially yeah. for like your emotions and working smoothly working smoothly sometimes means you have to suppress a lot of emotion um, absolutely because you have the directors and producers wanting everything down to architectural design plans the yeah. way they structure things um, yeah, and yeah, if, yeah. You, if you deviate that they have no qualms about opening up their emotions about things yeah, <laughs> true, true, true. Um, but they, at the end of the day, hopefully they have a sense of decorum about um, what they say and how they handle things afterwards. Sometimes you wake up and you are in not in the best mood. You just feel a little bit down. And then you need to like switch it up. The moment they, it's called action and the directors want a certain thing from you or a certain emotion, or a certain mood, you need to be able to switch it up. And it's not always easy, you know? Um, but I think we all have our ways of dealing with it, internalizing uh, what we feel in order to get the job done. Because at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. I think the um, reference we can make is to to the work Stanislavski did, not just for, for the actors themselves to convey a certain emotion at a certain time is but for off screen for off when the curtains are closed is yeah. how to use Stanislavski to reconnect with what's important at one particular time there's a very fine line between what well, in my case um, I don't know if this is the same for everyone but what you're saying is so true it is very important to bring back or come back to reality after a day's work because i think we as creatives we get kind of sucked into our little bubble our little i like to say it's our little world because i when i am on set whether it's working directly with crew or with the cast um i feel like it's almost as if the outside world kind of fades away from me and it's your own little bubble because you as a cast or crew experience your own little, you know, world. Because essentially you're creating a new story, you're creating a whole new world. And sometimes then going back to reality, you know, driving back home or 
than just being over a weekend with family and friends. You need to kind of find a way to shut your, not shut off, but kind of remove yourself from that world. To come back and like I said, connect with yourself so that you don't forget to deal with your own personal thoughts and feelings so that you can definitely separate the two. So I think that is so true what you say, to connect with reality once you've done the job. I kind of appreciate the fact that some act like like you describe, it's almost as if you're blocked off from reality at some point. Mm. Um, and last time me and Alma spoke, we talked about um, a literal safe space that you need to create for yourself. And yes, I think it's a drawing that parallel even between doing that on a job versus doing that for yourself when you actually come home, when you need to de-stress or when you yeah. when you actually just need to like meditate or something people's versions of safe space is obviously very different um, each person has his or her, her own form of safe space um, some people like you mentioned some people will go home and take 10 to 20 minutes a day a time in their day to meditate um, whether it's lying down on the bed or finding a little corner in the house which you you know prepare for yourself. Some people might find cooking a form of meditation, a form of safe space. Some people find it in a book. Um, some people find it in being creative by drawing or whatever the case might be. Um, that is so important to have. Even though, like for my instance myself, I'm an extrovert. I love people. I love, you know, um, being around others. But even I have my safe space and mm. that is when I sit down and I also have a YouTube channel where I just record myself painting myself transforming myself <laughs> into an other characters or into you know just doing some fun creative looks that is my safe space that is me you know coming back to myself if that makes sense I know uh, you have a background in acting and, and writing um, mm. Is that the, the full extent or are there other things you're working on? <laughs> well, no, actually my whole background is, well, my educational background is based on um, the entertainment industry, whether it's writing, whether it's acting. Um, so currently, um, I think probably Alma did tell you, we have a drama workshop, which we actually would have presented today um, the 11th of May, we would have presented it at a school today, but because of the situation we are in with the lockdown, obviously that could not um, happen. Um, but we have this workshop and we also have a women empowerment. You could call it a workshop or a seminar, whatever the case. And we're trying to find new ways how to work around the lockdown to still be able to pre present our work. But other than that, I just work on my YouTube channel and my acting career. Mm. So, yeah, that's that's me. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. see me as your your only participant in the in in the workshop. So I feel honored. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You you've described how you are creative. Um, yeah. But would you? So can you correlate like what? What, what does creativity mean in a mental health capacity for you? Wow, I love that question. Um, I think because mental health is something that, and I'm gonna be brutally honest with you, um, it is something I've never given a second thought because I grew up in a household where creativity and a positive mindset was and is still today second nature. Um, because I have a very creative family. My dad, my mom and my sister, um, we all are creative, very creative in our own little way. Um, and having a positive mindset, I think you can almost, you can basically link the two, but my parents always say to me that life is simple and it is our job to see life for what it is and not for who we are because sometimes we can get so sucked into our own problems and that's okay it is totally okay to not be okay um 
But the word positivity for me, for example, is my whole structure or my whole base foundation around a good mental health. Because being positive to me doesn't mean that everything is going to be okay. Being positive doesn't mean that now suddenly the world's gonna be a better place. Now suddenly things are gonna fall into place in your life. No, being positive for me means that you are able to find and see the good things in every situation, whether it's good or bad. That for me is positivity. And that goes hand in hand with creativity because creativity for me means to um, not create, to bring something into existence. To, and that is same with being positive, seeing something out of something that's bad, creating a positive reality in your own mind, in your own, you know, your own little world. So with YouTube, for example, because we mentioned it just now, um, being creative, when I start doing the YouTube, that is my form of being creative. But as I start talking, I kind of, everything blurs out. The reality of the lockdown, I forget about it because in that moment, in the moment of being creative, I don't worry about the things that's going outside, the politics, the lockdown, the, you know, me being scared of not maybe having a job in a couple of weeks, you know? Um, so creativity is a way of centering yourself. It focuses you and everything that is negative in your, you know, frame of reference fades away. And that is so good, I think, for mental health because I think anyone can relate in their own way to their form of creativity, which is fantastic. Um, and even even a, an interview like this for me is, um, it's kind of freeing having a space where you have a focus on one specific thing. It's as mm -hmm. if it frees up the rest of your mind to think of other ways how whatever you're doing now is gonna be helpful for everybody else, whoever um, experiences it. And it's like the whole performer on stage thing. Um, yeah. It's when there, when something, when somebody says their line perfectly, and you don't say yours perfectly for you to remember the next line, um, mm. and your training kicks in and you start to improvise. It's You've, you've yeah. technically you've made the mistake, but you've also allowed yourself to think of new ways to alter the, the whatever that was to yeah. help the audience. No, absolutely, I agree because, like I said, the world we can. Like, it's, I think it's a it's one of my favorite poems. Um, the world is but a stage, and that is exactly how I see. Like sometimes you need to you know, go into autopilot and just improvise. Um, because you, we, we're not always in control with what was happening to us. And we the only thing we do have control of um, is how we handle the situation. And that can go into whether it's on stage, whether it's on a set. If something goes wrong, it's not what happens and not how what how bad the situation is. It's literally how you how you handle the situation, and whether it's on stage or set or in real life. Would you call that the advice for for non creatives then? People have a weird con concept or a weird idea about what it is to be creative. I think when people when people hear the word creative, they automatically assume it is that you have to draw, you have to paint, you have to write, you have to act. But it's so much more than that because every person is different and that's why I'm saying this goes for the non-creatives because everyone is creative, whether they know it or not. Um, for instance, um, I'm not the best cook in the world, but someone else is. And if that person goes tonight and you know, whip up their normal spaghetti bolognese or whatever, and they throw in a couple of new ingredients, they are creating, they are creating a new dish, but they're not thinking about it in that way. So I would say that there's no such thing as a non-creative. 
every person is creative in their own frame of reference, depending on what they are passionate about. They are creative. Yeah, just that statement, like everybody is creative. Um, it's kind of challenging as well for people who might not feel motivated or might not feel like empowered by the current lockdown situation. Yeah. Um, it, it, and and it might be confronting for these people because um, they don't know any better. They don't. What they've been taught is how to do it, how to make a living. And if that yeah. starts to fade, it doesn't empower them as much as much as they even would if their job doesn't go as well. And they wouldn't. They would normally just go to talk to people about. It. Now they can't even do that. Um, yeah. So I think knowing that there is help and there is there are ways to overcome this slump is important yeah. um how how would you say you've adapted to this lockdown situation well first off i just want to say that my heart does go out to everyone that has been s stuck in the lockdown all by themselves i cannot even begin to imagine how hard that must be um, I mean, even some, for someone like myself, I and I think it, I think my my upbringing has has helped me a lot during the past few weeks because there hasn't been one moment where I kind of felt I'm bored or I'm down in the dumps, and um, it's because my mind I trained. That sounds so weird, but because of my parents and the way they taught, they raised me. I'm very fortunate for them they have taught me to keep going keep going never stop don't stop just keep going so i find i'm very scattered brain so i would start one project now and then it will you know give me an idea for something else and then i'll start something else so i always have something to do but not everyone is is in the same headspace than i am so my advice essentially for these um people that feel that they don't have anything to do or they feel mentally stuck within themselves during this time is they need to find even if it's two things write down two or three things that they are grateful for i know this sounds very strange but the moment you open up your eyes find something that you're grateful for and write it down if it's something that whether it is your garden whether it is your parents whether it is then if it's your someone that you're grateful for pick up your phone and give them a message send them a message send them a whatsapp call or whatever the case might be but connect we should not forget that just because we are confined to our living rooms or our rooms we are not limited in our connection and communication with other people and i feel like even now with this lockdown i have connected with my family that lives in Durban, in Cape Town, um, even more now during this lockdown here than I've ever did before because it forces us to slow down. So for those people, connect. Don't be afraid to talk. Don't go hide away within yourself. Um, and then if you are passionate about reading, Pick up a new book, read some, or read your favorite book again. Um, I think it's just very important that you don't go sit still. It's okay to sit still for a day, for two days, to have your moment of not feeling okay. But it's very important that we don't stay there. And we need to sometimes force ourselves to just get up and do something. Like for instance, I need to clean the house today. I am in no mood whatsoever. <laughs> Um, but I have to force myself to do it and that's the same with anything else that we do in life. Sometimes you have to force yourself to play Uno with your brother or with your sister and you might think it's such a simple game but before you know it you're going to enjoy it because it's the connection that we have with each other that is important and you need to force yourself to connect. Um, it's important for our souls, that's what I believe. It's very important for us as like people, people that talk about these things um, to really be open about 
what we know about what what matters um, and I yeah. feel especially so because it helps other people it's a form of leadership that might not be brutally telling them what to do but it it triggers things um, yeah. and even right like you said I um, writing down things that matter to you the people yeah. right, making sure you go to the people that matter to you um, I really appreciate that that's very cool advice and I think also we shouldn't be scared to be vulnerable Bernard, because I think in this time we all are vulnerable I am a very self um, I'm a very positive and I've got a lot of confidence within me but even especially the last couple of days I have felt vulnerable even though I'm positive <laughs> um, I, there was times where I felt vulnerable and we feel sometimes I feel we as humans are too proud to speak up and say listen I'm not okay and this especially the last couple of weeks has taught me that speak up just speak up. I mean, I, for the first time in my life, has experienced a form of anxiety um, that I've never experienced in my life before. How would you define it differently from the butterflies in your stomach before a stage performance? Oof, no, that's because that's the feeling, yo, that's the best feeling in the world. Like, that's, that's complete ecstasy feeling you feel before you get on a stage is like, you can't explain it and that is something I want to get. I want to feel that feeling again and I want people to, I wish people could feel that same feeling because it's indescribable. Mm. But the anxiety that I'm feeling, it's just, it's horrible. It is, you, it's, it's feel like I want to control things that I have no control over um, in terms, and what the things that's been triggering my form of anxiety, I guess, is the insecurity where the gods to whether we are going to continue with production whether i'm going to continue with work or not and that is scary because for the first time in my life i have no control over what's going to happen because technically i should have been working the last couple of four weeks um but i couldn't i can't and that is what so and that's so the difference for me is that this anxiety is something I don't want to experience and I don't wish this feeling on anyone but it's okay it's okay to feel this way because it places things for me it places things for me in perspective because it makes me realize that this this feeling I have is towards something that I'm passionate about so it's kind of again once again that's the good thing that's the positive side <laughs> of feeling this anxiety because it made me realize how much my job and my career means to me. Mm. Um, so that's the, the the positive side of what I've been feeling lately. And I just want to say it's okay for people to feel this way. Everyone feels this way at one point. It's exactly these times that are if you if you try to write it down in what what you're feeling, uh, the the feelings that you would get from reading that, it would sound exactly the same as how would you, how you would describe whatever happens before you go on stage. Um, <laughs> because yeah. you, you have no control over what's going to happen next. Yeah. And people are there or they're not. It's not for you to question. People are going to mm. do what they're going to do. You can't control that now because <laughs> if you haven't yeah. appeared on stage yet. You haven't yeah. done anything yet. So the butterflies are there. They're just they're just filling up your brain at this point instead of your stomach. That uh, butterflies before a stage performance is like none other. Mm. And I really are, and I wish that I wish I could just take what I'm feeling, bottle that up, and give it to people, the people I love, like my family, because I always ex explain this feeling like standing behind the curtain, hearing the the audience walk in and your heart's racing. That feeling, I want everyone to experience it. It's amazing. <laughs> it is. It's, yeah. I don't know, I've, I might have um, like taken advice from people um, too harshly, but at some point I, I literally described fee feeding off the audience 
um, which was kind of a bad thing to do um, yeah. at some point, but I guess it was true for me at the time. But it's literally, yeah. it's feeding not off the audience, but feeding off what your body is telling you and the, the feedback you get from whatever is happening on stage. Um, yeah. It's that improvisational energy. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think I, I, I would also say I, I want to give this improvisational energy to everybody because it's so tragic to not be able to see someone look at their situation, understand what they're going through, and collectively take everything into a very itemized, structured list and work with that. Yeah. Um, because I think that's what we as creatives are technically trained to do. Well, that's one of the things they taught me is that pers per I can't say this word, perspective. <laughs> pers perspective. <laughs> perspective. <laughs> perspective is one of the most important things in this whole world because you can change your life if you change your perspective. And what I mean with that, sometimes, let's take this lockdown. Sometimes you just need to stand still. You need to take a breather and you need to step away from a situation to get a completely new um, outlook on the situation. That's why I'm saying it's okay to feel down in the dumps for two days or whatever, hmm. but you need to step away and look at it from another angle because no. um and i think that's why we, where the improv comes in we as creators kind of we kind of improvise automatically because we are it's it's worked into our bodies like you said um it becomes it becomes part of you to just think of something new get a new solution because sometimes when you're on stage there's no other choice than to come up with a new solution to get the show back on track and the same with life i think people just need to change their perspective and if you can't change your perspective talk to someone that's on the outside don't necessarily talk to your partner because your partner might be looking from the same point of view as you mm. but rather but rather talk to a friend that is removed from the situation ask their opinion because they have a complete and what do they say? They've got a little objective viewpoint. Yeah. yeah, they've got an objective viewpoint. Objective viewpoint, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you. I think the takeaway is, is really try to adapt to your circumstance. Because even though it's all you have, it might not stay that way. It might not stay that way at all. So rather change before your situation changes. Um, and you might come out stronger of where you were, stronger than you were. And yeah, thank you again, um, Lee, for, for chatting with us. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, and awesome. have, a, have a safe and clean, but productive uh, rest of your day. Um, and yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Van, and I appreciate it. And yeah, see you once again. We'll see you next time, audience. <laughs>